Hey guys, it's day number 94 of my 365 day Jimmy Ice Bath Challenge. We are here yet again, every day, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, going live on Instagram. Come join the fun. If you're anywhere else watching this on the replay, come join the fun. We do go live at 5 p.m. sharp. Live in low carb man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. But I put my body into icy cold water. This is the Morozco Forge, is the name of this uh, product that I use. 32.3 degrees Fahrenheit today. And so uh, plenty chilly for the gymster today. So thank you guys for joining in. Those of you who are regulars, who I see a bunch of you are on here, are regulars. Uh, I get into the ice bath, those of you who are not regulars, you don't know this, I get into the ice bath for five minutes, yes, 32 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes, and I've done this every day in the year 2022, it's just April, I got a long way to go, but I've been able to get in there, do it, and get out, and then when I get out, I put on a shirt, put on my Crocs, and I go take a walk and then talk to you guys. So stick around. If you have questions, please feel free. If you have questions, put them down below. And when I go on my walk here in about seven or eight minutes, we will answer your questions. But thank you all for being here today. I'm going to get in the ice bath. While I'm in there, I'm going to talk about how have I been able to stay consistent with all of these ice baths day after day after day after day. I want to talk about that here today. I just noticed I forgot to take it off Wi-Fi. Let me do that real quick because when it's on Wi-Fi, it sometimes is a little fluky. So taking it off of there. Plus when I go walking, I'm going to lose it if I don't take it off Wi-Fi. All right. I think you can see everything right there. We got five minutes on the clock. Get ready. Get set. Here we go. In we go, every day. Gotta settle into it, guys. When you get in, it's a little rough. But as you breathe, you can breathe right into it. Whew. Okay. So today I want to talk about consistency and how it's the key to doing this. Because a lot of people are like, all right, you're doing this every single day. How are you able to stay so consistent getting into the ice bath? Don't you get tired of it? Aren't you still scared of it? Uh, all these kinds of questions. No, I have not gotten tired of it. And if I'm being honest, sometimes I'm a little scared of it. <laughs> Only because I know what that initial is like getting in. The initial is a bitch and it always will be a bitch. But like, if it was easy, how would it be pushing it? I like the fact that it's still a challenge when I first get in to get settled and to really get my body to calm down. 
more than anything, I think what has helped me is the routine of it. So I get a little bit of complaints from people. Why are you just doing it at 5 p.m. Eastern time every single day? Why don't you switch it up? And I have. I've on occasion switched it up to the morning, to the midday, to the afternoon. But I most of the time do it at 5 o'clock. Why? Why do I do it at 5 o'clock every day? It's a routine. Like, I don't even not think about it now. And I'll tell you, the one day that I took off was my birthday party that I had. It was on a Saturday. And it was so weird. Because my birthday party was happening when 5 p.m. Eastern happened. And so, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm supposed to be in an ice that like my brain was so used to it by then I had so created this habit and so the way that you're able to get into a cold shower or an ice bath every single day is to make it a routine get in the habit of doing this make it as part of your day as brushing your teeth brushing your hair eating going to the bathroom this is just another part of the day and if you can make it a habit, get into a routine, and then stay in that routine, I think it's gonna serve you well. All right, it looks like about 30 something seconds left. I'm gonna lift the hands, because they're getting a little nummy wummy. But that routine is everything, guys, to help you stay consistent. And I have loved, loved this routine. All right, 20 seconds left, let's go into the water. never gets old. I love going under the water. <sighs> so yes, those of you who came in late, I just did five minutes in a 32 degree temperature ice bath. I have been doing this every single day in the year 2022. This is my challenge for 2022. Some people like to change a diet. Some people like to commit to like exercise. We all have our thing that we want to commit to. Well, Jimmy has committed to ice baths. And I mean intensely cold ice baths, 32 degrees Fahrenheit every day, five minutes. So I just got out and uh, I have been doing a walk afterwards because I was interviewed by a guy who informed me, who knows a lot about cold therapy. He informed me if you do some moderate exercise like a brisk walk, after doing the cold in a guy, it will boost your testosterone levels. And I was like, whoa, okay. Got my attention, hello. So we come out here and walk. But as always, if you have questions about cold therapy, questions about what my journey's been like, or questions about what I talked about here today of consistency, how are you able to stay consistent? Uh, I welcome your feedback. Let me scroll back to the top, see who else here today. I got lots of water on my screen today. <laughs> I was like, I can't see the screen. It's so waterlogged. All right. Linda, Sharon, Berte, Dawn Marie, Holly. Sharon says, day 94. Yes, day 94. Texas Livingston, Vicky, Sabrina. Track, D. Shonk, Jenny, Katie, T. Flowers, Bulletproof, Thomas, Melissa, Gillis, Patty. I saw Patty at the farmer's market the other day. That was cool to see you, Patty. Uh, A.K. Shaw, Tomas, Sin SD, Courtney, Carnivore Runner, RS5, McAlpin, Anna, Nutrient Dense Teas. Lots of people here today. Thanks for being here, guys. C. Reyes, Sam, Danielle. Oh, hey, Danielle. I hadn't seen you on here before. Thanks for coming in. We got keto celebrities in here today, you guys. 
Bulletproof says, go Jimmy. 94, yes. Mary's here. Lisa, color artist, Carolyn. So yeah, guys, today is day number 94. I'm coming up on 100 days. If you'd have told me on day zero, when I was just first thinking about starting this, that by day 100, that I will have experienced all the things that I've experienced with this, I wouldn't have believed you. I think the... I think the benefits of cold therapy are so underrated because I've heard about cold for years. In fact, over a decade. I remember when I was in the paleo community, over a decade ago was when the paleo community started and I was their token low carb guy in the paleo community. I would um, hear them give talks about, oh, deliberate cold exposure, cold thermogenesis, taking ice baths. And of course, I, I thought they were a bunch of idiots. I was like, what? What do you mean? Cold showers? What? Ice bath? What? It didn't make sense to me because I didn't know about it. And so I've heard them talk about it for many years, but I never really understood it until I started doing it. Which is why I encourage people, if you're one of those people that this looks weird, I don't understand it. In fact, somebody just before I came on the air literally just left a comment on one of my ice videos. Doesn't that slow down your metabolism getting in too cold? And so I had to explain to this person that no, it's actually just the opposite. That it revs up the metabolism. Um through the activation of brown fat um, and then the brown fat warming you up actually helps with glucose uptake. It helps with insulin sensitivity. It helps to utilize fat for fuel, that whole lipolysis word. So yeah, a lot of the things that people would think would happen from an ice bath is actually not true at all, <laughs> the, the negative things. Um, I know a lot of people also worry about like hypothermia. You would have to be in 32 degree water for like 30 minutes before you would even have a risk of hypothermia. Um, and a lot of people, oh, uh, Melissa just bought a badge. Thank you for that uh, very much. Appreciate that. And you guys, I think there's a little thing down there. If you want to support my work, you can buy a badge. Really appreciate that. Um, a lot of people, they just... They don't want to believe that there's benefit to something that's hard. And I'm convinced of this. I feel like if it's hard, it's easier for them to just say, oh, that looks too hard. No, thank you. And then they wash their hands of it and they're done. And they never really, they never really give it a go to try it for themselves. And look, at the end of the day, your choices are your choices. You can choose to fast. You can choose to eat keto. You can choose to do an ice bath. Nobody's forcing you to do any of those things. But I think your reasoning for not embracing them might be just because you don't have good information about it. So it's one reason I'm motivated to want to write a book about this cold therapy because I don't really know of any resources that are really that great that teaches about all this stuff. So Jimmy's going to write that resource. Stay tuned. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Amara is here. Carol Ann. Courtney. Mario. Gillis says, when are you going to test your testosterone to see if it goes up? So I've only been doing this a little over a week. And so you need to do it about three to four months to really see if there's been a significant increase. And so it's gonna be a while. But but I like the idea, I like this routine too of getting in the ice bath and then getting out. Now the only thing I miss about what I used to do, sitting down, just talking to you guys, sitting down on my couch over there. The only thing I miss about that is I could feel my body warming itself up naturally. This way, doing it this way, the activity is warming me up. 
And I, I expressed fear to the guy that told me about this. Hey, am I not like cannibalizing some of the benefits of letting my body tap into that store body fat and trying to warm myself up and create more brown fat and all the things. And he said, well, a little, but the trade-off is you get a boost in testosterone. So I'm giving it a go like I do everything else. (laughs) Worst case scenario is it doesn't work for Jimmy, but uh, I'm game to always try things. Here we are. And I know how to walk, so walk is not a big deal. Plus, when I'm walking and talking, I'm actually pretty good at that. I do a walk and talk every Sunday on the trail over here. So I'm used to talking while walking. Yep, yep. Courtney says 100%. Uh, Olga is here. Paleo Barbie is here. Didi Shang says, how long did you stay in the cold water when you first started? Five minutes. I uh, oh, So first started at the very beginning. Clarify what you mean by that. Do you mean three years ago when I first started getting out? Because um, when I first started, it was in my shower. So I would take a hot shower. And then at the end of the hot shower... This is like before I did any cold anything. After the uh, end of the hot shower, I would turn it down just to the warm, and it was all I could stand. I was not tolerant to cold at all. I did not like cold water because I had not learned how to breathe yet. There's going to be a whole section in my cold book on how you breathe to get through this. And I actually have several expert breathing friends that help people with cold therapy all the time that I'll feature in the book. But that's how I got started. And I did as much as I could. Warm water, you know, 30 seconds. Eventually I got colder water and it got to the point with the cold water in the shower for an hour I would be under that. That I'm like, okay, I need to step up my game because I'm enjoying the cold but it's not cold enough anymore. So then I had to go colder by buying ice for my bathtub. And I did that for a year. And it was inconvenient because I'd have to go buy ice every few days. Uh, It was time consuming because I had to keep uh, filling up water into the bathtub every day. Uh, And then I was using a lot of water because I would have to drain the water and uh, So after I did that for a little while, plus it was a four foot tub and I'm six foot three inches tall. So I'm a tall boy. Was not convenient. So I remember reaching out to Mike Mutzel and I said, Mike, tell me which of these ice bath companies has the best product. Because I know he knows all these people and all the stuff. He's like, by far, Morosco Porch. He said, they're not cheap, but... You want an ice bath where you can get in. The temperature is set. You don't have to ever worry about it. It makes its own ice. Da, 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 da. They're the one. And I was like, okay. So I took out a mortgage on my house. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> they are expensive. But if you can price it into your healthcare costs, which, by the way, I just I just wrote it off on my taxes. Uh, I was going to do it as a healthcare expense which it would qualify as that. But then my tax guy said, well, you'll get a better write-off if you do it as a business expense. So either way, I was able to write it off. And uh, so that was cool. So yeah, so as soon as I got the Morozco, the very first one I did in the Morozco was 45 degrees. And that was the coldest I'd ever done was 45. And it was okay. I was able to stay in about 20 to 25 minutes. I can't remember exactly how long, but... A good amount of time. It was cold, but it was not. It was not 32 degrees. So then I remember putting it down to 32 for the first time. I think it was in December I did that. Oh, oh my gosh! I have never felt such an intense feeling getting into water as I did that day, getting into a 32 degree ice bath for the very first time. 
I literally, when I got in, it took my breath away. It was so overwhelmingly cold. And in fact, I felt my, I felt my chest kind of do, it freaked me out to no end. I'm like, holy crap, what have I done? I thought I was going to have to do higher temperature to be able to do it. And then I get out of the ice bath and I have these little red blotches all over my stomach and on my arms. I'm like, what the hell? I remember contacting the Morasco Forge people and I'm like, what is happening to my body? <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's detoxing. That's a, that's a detoxification thing. I'm like, is it going to do it every time? They're like, well, usually it does it once or twice and then it stops. And I kept doing the 32 degrees. Never saw the red blotches ever again. Never got the heart palpitations ever again. Now I get in there. And yes, it still takes my breath away. And I calm the breath down like you guys see me do. And then I'm able to settle in. And so when it came time at the end of last year, hey, I want to do a challenge of sorts what should I do? I decided I'm going to do 32 degrees every day, five minutes a day. And that's what I've done. I did 10 minutes a couple weeks ago. I've done all kinds of little challenges over the summer when it gets a lot warmer. I want to try to push it to 15 minutes for one session. And probably do a morning session and an evening session of at least five minutes. Um, because I think my body's probably going to be a, a lot warmer, obviously, with the warmer temperature outside. So it would behoove me to cool the body down maybe twice in a day instead of just once. So that's the plan for when the weather gets a lot warmer. It's very comfortable here today. I think it's in like the mid 60s. It's beautiful. I love this time of year. Uh, healing bag is here. Lena Doran is here. Krista, Mama Ors. Don Marie says, why do women need testosterone? Well, it's not for women to boost their testosterone. I think I, maybe I didn't make that clear. It boosts testosterone in guys. For women, it actually boosts estradiol, which is the precursor to estrogen. Um, so you get you get your female hormones boosted. Men get their male hormones boosted. So I apologize if I didn't make that clear. No, women do not want to boost their testosterone. But for us dudes, we like it when our testosterone is boosted. Helps us grow muscle, helps us feel energetic. Helps with libido. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are beneficial when you boost your testosterone as a man. DDS says, yes, when you first started cold therapy, I'm finding out it, it is so hard to do. Yeah. So as you heard my story, uh, if it's hard to do, it means you've gone too much too fast. So back off to what you can do. Here, here is the rule of thumb, and I'm going to keep repeating this. I've said this in many of the videos, but it, it still rings true. Start with what is uncomfortable for you and yet still doable with proper breathing. So the with proper breathing is the key here. Because a lot of people, when they go into an ice bath or they go under cold water in a shower... What do you do? You hold your breath. <laughs> I see these people on the videos getting into an ice bath for the first time and they're just all tense. <laughs> and I'm just like, my God, breathe, breathe. I think that's the mistake so many people make. They get into the cold and I know it's an instinctive thing to kind of hold your breath. Think about when you're lifting heavy weights you're trying to bench press. What does the trainer tell you to do? He says, breathe. And yet so many people, when they're lifting or they're pushing something heavy, 
they hold their breath. And all you're doing when you're in cold and you're doing that breath histrionics thing that I just did, you're making the cold worse. You're making it harder on yourself. The secret to making yourself warmer when you are in the cold is your breath. One of the videos I did for this series is how there's actual science that shows deep breathing while you're exposed to cold actually warms your body up. And so I would edify you DDS with when you get in, just breathe, just And if that's not cutting it, you might look up Wim Hof breathing. So W-I-M-H-O-F breathing. Wim Hof is a famous cold guy. But he developed this breathing technique called Wim Hof. And, I mean, it's intense. It's like a warrior breathing style. And so if the whole... Doesn't do it for you then you need to try Wim Hof. I'll, I'll demonstrate for those of you that haven't seen Wim Hof before. I don't like Wim Hof. I get dizzy headed, but I'll do a few rounds just so you guys can see. So the purpose of Wim Hof is to suck in air as fast as you can and to blow it out as fast as you can. So, and by doing that, you're oxygenating your body. And plus, it's such an aggressive move. See, I just got a little dizzy now. <laughs> this is why I don't Wim Hof. Woo! Yeah, that will start to make me wobble. Um, it's such an aggressive breathing pattern that you don't even notice you're cold. And I think that's part of its allure. It's a nice distraction from what you're experiencing. So... Figure out what your breathing type is going to be that will help you tolerate that cold water and, and you'll do it. It's still gonna be hard. Look, that 32 degree ice bath I get in, it's still hella hard. And it's always gonna be hella hard, that's the point. The moment it becomes easy is the moment it no longer gives you benefit. The reason you benefit is it's still hard. It's not super hard for me anymore, but it's still hard, especially initially getting in. Mario says, how is maintenance on the forge? Yeah, it maintains itself pretty well. I've got the filtered forge. So it's got a filter that filtrates the water um, and it makes its own ice. The, the hardest part is figuring out what temperature to set it on so it will keep making ice. There was about a month ago when it started getting a little warmer that I noticed I woke up one morning and all the ice had melted. Now it was still like 33, 34 degrees in the forge, but I like ice in there. And so I was like bummed. No, I need ice. And so I keep it at around 30 to 31 degrees so that it will make ice. Well, when you set it, you have to make sure that you set it again the next day because it will default to a higher temperature so that it doesn't just stay one big block of ice. So it cycles it where you put it on a setting, 31 degrees, let's just say, but then at some point it, it gets warmer so it will release the ice that it made. And in fact, today that's what happened. I noticed that it was warmer, it was not running, and so I had to turn it back on to, uh, to get it down to that 32.2 deg 32 degrees Fahrenheit that it was today. Um, but there was a little less ice in there today because of that. But super easy. I have yet to dump out the water, if that's what you're asking. That's the same water that's been in there now four months. Because um, it constantly filtrates the water. It's got one little button on it that you push. And it will filtrate that water constantly. So I've been very pleased with it. I love the convenience of whenever I want to get into an ice bath, it's ready to go. And a lot of people ask, doesn't it use a lot of power? So 
it plugs in and it's literally no more power than like a deep freezer. And those don't take up much power at all. In fact, the, a lot of the components of the cold are deep freezer uh, components. And so they did a really good job. Very elegant design. Sam is here. Fluffy to Fitz here. Steph, Marie, Seaview, Vita, Pianista, Angie. Angie says, hello. DDS says, I've been doing saunas. So cold therapy seems so cold. We'll stop doing the sauna ahead of time. <laughs> um, I mean, I get it. Saunas have great uh, benefits too. The whole heat shock proteins. You definitely want all of that to go on. But if your sauna work is making the cold seem so cold, maybe focus on the cold for a bit um, and see if you can nail that. Not that the sauna is not important, but I think you'd be surprised. And here, here's another little litmus test. If you're feeling the effects of the cold when you're in the cold water, you're the one who needs the cold the most. Think about that, guys. If you're one of those people that, oh, I can't do cold therapy because it's just too cold and I, I can't take it. You're the one who needs it because your body should be well adapted to be able to go to that cold temperature. And if it doesn't do it easily, you need to retrain your body to do it easily. Because in ancestral days, we didn't have comfortable thermostat controlled environment like we do now. Literally year round in America, especially, but around the world, the conveniences of the westernized society means you can turn on the air conditioner during the summer and keep it 72 degrees Fahrenheit and then during the winter you can turn on the heat and keep it 72 degrees Fahrenheit. When are you ever able to feel the extremes of the temperatures? Especially the cold. You're not. And so we wonder why we have some of the health issues that we do. We wonder why people are averse to getting cold is because we've never allowed ourselves to be exposed to the cold. Meanwhile, people like Jimmy Moore, not only purposely putting myself in an ice bath, but during the winter, I don't, I wear short and t-shirt. No big deal. No big deal. Because I've trained my body to get used to cold again. And we can all do that. Debbie's here, Amy's here. Tomas says, are there any blood markers that you're planning to test or recommend testing to measure some of the impact of the cold thermogenesis? Great, great question. I would think inflammation would be a great one. So HSCRP, I cannot imagine doing all of these ice baths that I, have, I would not see my inflammatory markers get better. Now, they're not bad. See, this is my problem starting the ice baths. The only major issue that I have is belly fat. I don't really have any bad health markers. All of my health markers are pretty good because I've eaten keto carnivore for a very long time. And so, and I do other biohacking types of things. So quantifiably, I'm not going to see major improvements in things like HSCRP or IGF-1, which is another inflammatory marker, homocysteine, another one. Um, but I think that would be a big one. Fasting insulin is going to be interesting too, because I have traditionally had a little bit of trouble with that one hovering around like the 10, 11, 12 mark. Not totally horrible, but not great either. Has this insulin sensitivity of cold helped with that? I want to know. Um, so that would be a big one. I mean, I could run a bunch of different markers, but those are two that I think, I think I'm going to focus in on and just kind of see where we are. Um, my problem is because of the whole pandemonium the last couple of years, I haven't been able to get my regular blood work that I would typically do. So it's been, been a couple of years since I've had baseline blood work run. But we will definitely do that after a period of time, probably at the six month mark of this ice bath challenge, which would be at the end of 
June, I will go, I will go run some markers and then we'll do it again at the end of December to see if there's any further improvements from even there. So that's the plan, Tomas. Uh, Tina's here, Laura, Jat for mom, Sam, Marcus. Laura says, in the tub with ice, how long should I stay there? So, stay in there. If it's uncomfortable but tolerable, and you've got ice in your bathtub, I have been known, and I know I'm the weird one, so don't follow my example. I have been known to stay in an hour. I don't think you should stay in an hour. Obviously, I'm a tall guy, so I had to like wiggle down, and so that's why the extra time. If you're able to submerge every part of your body for at least 10 to 15 minutes, then that's probably pretty good. So if you get in and you can't quite get your body all the way under the water, then do it in parts. But if you can get your whole body under the water, just sink your body down. Make sure again, the vagus nerve, the like backside of your head, feel that little knot on the backside of your head. Make sure it goes below the water. So you can kind of like lean back and let it go below the water. Make sure you cup your hands and get it on your face and all over your head. And if you can stay in there for about 15 minutes with an ice bath, you're probably gonna get some incredible benefits doing that. Um, and you might be so comfortable and feel so relaxed that you wanna go a little longer. There's no danger in that because your body is heating up the ice and heating up the water. In other words, it's not controlled like the Morosco Forge is. That stays 32 no matter what, no matter how long I stay in, it stays 32. But yours will start to warm up. <clears throat> and ice in a bathtub, if you're just putting, you know, like a bag of ice in, it's going to get down to the 40s for the temperature. Um, and not real close to, to freezing. So you should be fine. I'd say do it as long as you feel good in there. And at some point you will get numb. And definitely, I haven't talked about this a lot, but do not lift your hands or your feet out of the water right away. Part of what you need to do is to get your hands and feet acclimated to that cold. And so if you keep them out of the water, you can't ever experience that acclimation with your hands and feet. And they're gonna hurt the worst because they're the furthest away from your heart. Think about the tips of your fingers, furthest away from your heart of anywhere on your body, uh, except for your feet. So that's why your toes hurt and your hands hurt when you get into an ice bath because that's where the circulation has to turn around the furthest away from the heart. So try to get those below the water. And look, my hands get numb when I'm in there, but they very quickly come back once I get out. Uh, Miss Chantal is here, Laura. Chantal says, hello. Alpine girl, Lois. Carrie, virtual honeymoon, Gabby, Coley. Ad infinitum. Bulletproof says, will you try more than 10 minutes? Yeah. When it gets hot, hot, hot outside Bulletproof, I'm thinking like a 95 degree temperature day. And maybe I just mowed the grass and I want to try to cool down. I don't think 10, 15 minutes would be hard at all. So yes, that is the goal. I just did 10 minutes for the first time a couple weeks ago, um, and I did that successfully, but I think I could probably pull off 15 when it's super hot outside, but we shall see. That is on the agenda. Patty says, hello, Jimmy. It's a beautiful evening. It is. I like just walking around my neighborhood. It's very peaceful around here. All right, Nikki's here. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in here today on day number 94 of my 365-day Jimmy Ice Bath Challenge. I'm still learning. 
watching what happens, sharing information with you guys. I hope you're getting a lot out of these videos because I am constantly researching new things to talk about for you guys. I'm trying to look up uh, <coughs> different studies that are out there, so just stay tuned. Oh, I have a surprise for you later in the week. So I got contacted by a fellow ice plunge enthusiast and she said, hey, I love what you're doing with your ice bath challenge. Can we do an ice bath together on one of your videos? I was like, cool, I get to do an ice bath with somebody. <laughs> so later in the week, not sure exactly when, maybe Friday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday, whenever, uh, I will be going live with someone else doing an ice bath. So she'll be in her ice bath and I'll be in mine. And I guess we'll trade notes jibber jabbering while we're walking after we get out. So that'll be a nice surprise later in the week. All right. That's it for now, guys. Let me get out of here. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, on Facebook, or even here on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M E N. Would love to have you join in, engage in the content like all these beautiful people did here today. Appreciate you being here. I will be back again tomorrow, you guys. I have a full schedule tomorrow. I record the One Step Deeper podcast at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's not on any uh, open format. That's just me and Brittany privately. At 1 o'clock on Instagram Live, I will be interviewing Keith and Michelle Norris from the Paleo FX Conference, which I will be giving a presentation at in Austin, Texas at that event. Uh, childhood trauma, is it a hidden cause of obesity and chronic disease? So... I am super excited about doing that topic at Paleo FX. So we'll talk to the founders of that conference tomorrow. And then, of course, 5 p.m. Eastern, right here for another ice bath. So until we meet again, we'll see you then. Bye, guys.